All right, welcome back. Let's just dive into it almost immediately. Now, the Senate has launched an investigation into the 30 trillion Naira Ways and Means expenditure during the previous administration, citing concerns of reckless spending. This probe will encompass various expenditures, including the 10 trillion Naira anchor borrower scheme and the Forex transaction, with another committee tasked to delve into the details. During Senate's deliberation yesterday, tensions ran high as senators debated the approval process, particularly criticizing the lack of transparency and detailed information provided by the Buhari's administration prior to approval. Former Senate President Ahmed Lau urged a focus on addressing present issues, while current Senate President Gosu Fabio emphasized the importance of scrutinizing past spending to understanding its impact on the ongoing food and security crisis. The formation of the ad hoc committee underscores the Senate's commitment to ensuring fiscal accountability and addressing the pressing challenges facing the nation. With concerns about the misuse of funds and the exacerbation of existing crises, senators are determined to uncover details of the spending and recommend necessary actions to mitigate its diverse effects. Now, in conclusion, the Senate's decision to investigate the 33 billion dollar ways and means expenditure reflects a broader effort to hold the previous administration accountable and address the urgent needs of the populace. Through rigorous scrutiny and deliberation, senators aim to shed light on past financial practices and chart a path towards more transparent and effective governance. Well, still with us in the studio this morning is uh, Mr. Lawale Kudayo, who is an educationist, a public affairs commentator, and yes, a farmer uh, at the sideline. And also with us is Dr. Olawale. And yes, just joining us again, because yes, when I asked him, he said, and I quote, he would be the Moses to part the way for Nigerians, hopefully God will. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> <laughs> a very good morning to you, Moses. Good morning. Good morning, David. Good morning, Fina. Good morning, uh, good morning good uh, Doctor. And good morning, uh, Lawal. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's uh, <laughs> part of the way for Nigeria. Indeed, <laughs> indeed. Um, well, I think uh, this, this administration, this, uh, this tent assembly, they seem to be making um, part of the way, as, as it were, mm. asking questions and uh, seeking answers because Nigerians have been wondering uh, with all the things that went on during the previous administration will there be a probe of the previous administration's activities now with this step probing looking into the ways and means uh, that goes into uh, is it 23 trillion or 30 trillion yeah. altogether yeah. it's 30 trillion altogether uh, money is granted by uh, you know some members of the National Assembly because Ahmed Ahmed Lawan, the former the the, the mm -hmm. former uh, Senate yes, president. the president of the Senate, is still there. Mm -hmm. It's still there. Yes. Let me come Same to you now, Doctor Lawali. Does this give you some sort of? I'm going to use this word loosely. Renewed hope. Mm. Mr. Moses. You don't, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't have to say <laughs> you know, before I by really, the way, before by the I way, have to say By the way, before you proceed, uh, let's, uh, let me congratulate you officially. Congratulations on uh, the addition to your family. Thank you very Thank much. Thank God for that. Thank you very much. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. Now, to your question. It's a good one that um, they are probing the past administration. It's a good one. But I can tell you for free that... 60%, if not 70% of the Senate in the 10th Assembly, were in the Senate in the 9th Assembly. Mm. Am I right? Mm. Most of them sitting there, they approved this ways and means loan. Is it, is it, is it ways and means? Ways and means. Ways, yes. Yes. Now, ways and means loan, actually, when I was actually making research about this thing, Buhari's administration was actually almost the first administration that misused this ways and means loan. Ways and means loan is actually meant to be the last resort kind of loan to be gotten from the Central Bank of Nigeria. It's different from uh, the IMF loan or the World Bank loan. It's a last resort loan that they'll give to you when they need emergency money to pad in the revenue, the, the, the budget. Now, first thing the Buhari administration did was that uh, 
the waste and mean loan was actually meant to be five percent of the past year's revenue. Mm. But when they now check the rate waste and mean loan of this of the, the it was over one hundred and thirty eight percent, which was a bridge on law of the of the national of the CBN yeah. law. That's one. Now, probing them now is that why what are they going to gain in probing them one because most of these people that approve this ways I mean loan were the one they are the ones sitting down there. Now imagine the past next president saying, let us forget about the past. That's and let us let us let us focus on the on the present. It's, it's, that it's, is it's, it's not just the past president, the past Senate president, even the present a Senate a president was of the opinion that we should look at the Ababio himself was of the opinion that we should look at the insecurity of the devil in Nigeria and even the food crisis. And then they could now set the committee later to look into that. Yeah. When when the, the past in, it it shows that they even need to check that past the, the Senate president, the past president. Did mm. you get out of the share of this money? Because why will somebody come out and say Forget about the past and mm. let's focus on let's focus on, on, on the present. No, it, it doesn't mm. happen in government. Right. That doesn't happen. So All what right. do you have to say about the fact that before the time, you know, when they brought out this this uh, 20, 22 point seven, uh, you know, a million a billion plus uh, the other seven point uh, seven billion thereabouts they were talking about, and uh, you know, someone was saying that the reason that could actually happen was the fact that the CNET couldn't take their time to look into what the president uh, 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 sub, uh, presented to them you know, before carrying it out because they were of the opinion that after they must have endorsed on that particular money to go, then they will now come back to do now, the review. I want to, I want to get a loan from you. I want to say, ah, please, Fina, give me 10,000 naira. And he asked me, what do you want to use this money for? I said, don't worry. You ask me, what do you want to do? I'll tell you, I want, I'll tell you, please give me the money first. After you give me the money, I will tell you what I want to use the money for. Now you're giving me the money. Do you think I will come back and tell you what I want to use the money for? <laughs> that was the mistake they made. They wanted to, the, the Senate came. They said, okay, what do you want to use this loan for? The federal government said, we'll come back and tell you what, we need the oh, money urgently. Yes. Just okay. pass it. They passed it. Till tomorrow, they've not given them what they want to use the money for. So why do you want to come out and say, want to probe what to use the money for? When there was no initial document about no, what no. you want to use the money for. Mm -hmm. So what All are right they probing? Let's, let's, let's get, uh, let's get, uh, Nick Agule into this conversation. Mm -hmm. Good morning to you. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. No. We understand we that, understand uh, that uh, we've, <laughs> yes, we've lost I, I, I'm going to come there. to you quickly, Mr. Lawal. At, at this point, um, what's your view about the potential consequence of such financial mismanagement as concerning the country's food and security situation? Because mm. 33 million yeah. naira is not um, I, Actually, I, I, I see this as the first thing that the, the that uh, house yes the mm. house is doing that's the first thing that is meaningful to me that yeah, they, they just started on mm. you get because if you don't probe the past administration how do you control the new one that is in how do you tell the for the one that is coming that uh, it's not going to always be business as usual you get and then second it comes to the another issue that we discussed here i think last week or week before about the education, the level of education of those who are going to hold political offices. Because, mm. like the doctor said now, hmm, there are rules for these monies to be approved. Yeah. And they brought it before you. So many of you, you did not even bother to look at the rule and say, no, this didn't follow the proper rule. You just append signature to let you know that you are not educated enough to be in that post. Is that like a function of education? There has to be so no, not That's because questions. when you are educated, there are some things that when they bring it before you, it prompts you immediately to want to investigate. It prompts you immediately to want to say this and say that. Let's not, not that also you just forget. sit down and then you'll be no. looking. Let's not also forget that majorly, like the doctor just pointed out, 60-70% of the same people that mm -hmm. were at the ninth Assembly mm -hmm. are in the 10th mm -hmm. Assembly. That, that, so, mm -hmm. what education are you trying well, to refer okay. to here? Do you know that when the, 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 that uh, rep member brought up the issue, mm -hmm. they quickly step it down as if it was something that is uh, abominable. You know, an, an abom sorry, abomination. They stepped it down quickly like an abomination. See, at a point, you're, when you get education, like what I'm saying education is not necessarily Apart from the normal school certification, mm -hmm. education also goes beyond conferences, you know, 
workshops, so many other, other things that will develop you to the level in which you are able to fit into where you, that area that you're supposed to be. Okay. To be able to make bills, and it's not something that is so, it's, it's cheeky. That's why any small thing they just have, uh, have a any small thing they just have a Look at this issue of budget. We said it earlier on here that they're supposed to have a law, a bill, that will regulate when the, 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 the executive will present their bill. Okay. And when the, I mean, sorry, the budget, and when the budget, you get it, will be passed in the House. Not the one who do in this fire brigade approach in less than one hour, uh, one month. The house is uh, the, the executive is presenting it. The house is passing it. It shows that they are not educated enough to handle that area. If okay. yeah, you be able to say no. You are bringing your budget in June. Mm -hmm. The budget for next year must be submitted in June. By then, you be able to sit down and take like three months to four months to be able to scrutinize the budget very well before you pass it. That is why all this thing is coming out now. Mm -hmm. And it's a good thing that they are probing it. If they probe the past administration, every ministry is probed. Every, mm -hmm. for example, we are talking about food crisis. The last government, the same government, spent trillions on agriculture. Mm -hmm. And nothing to show for it. So if nobody is asking questions, the present one will think it's business as usual and the whole thing will go on. We are in ninth month now, and we are still complaining heavily about food crisis. Uh, food, there's food crisis. Insecurity is, it, it, it continues to grow. It's worsening. Mm -hmm. So many other areas, no place in the... Because the past administration, nobody is talking about. The present one will think, well, the moment I spend my time, no, it's forgotten. We should change that music. It okay. should be the music in which the first thing we do is to begin to probe the past administration. How do you spend your budget? For the eight years or four years you spent in office, what did we get? How much did you spend, Minister for Agriculture? You have spent 10 trillion mm -hmm. on agriculture. Right. Then bring a, what you have been able to, to achieve from that. Right. Then. Okay. Medicals, now let's, let's reintroduce uh, Nick Agule to this conversation. Uh, we, we lost the connection earlier. Well, good morning once again. Uh, Nick Agule, who is a chartered accountant and uh, a major player uh, in the oil and gas sector. Now we're talking it's, it's your field, basically. Money matters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nick, now, uh, the, the, the um, minister, the minister of finance and coordinated minister of the economy has said that there is a proposition to put a bill forward that will remove all unnecessary taxes, unnecessary taxes, uh, authorize the removal of all taxes and levies that constitute uh, nuisance from the country's tax system as a way of checkmating um, usage uh, of ways and means. Uh, how do you react to that, really? Uh, uh, good morning, uh, Moses. Uh, good morning to my co-panelists in the studios. And uh, good morning to our viewers globally. Uh, I think if we take the statement by the Minister of Finance on the surface, it's contradictory in the sense that if you remove taxes, the implication taxes. is that there is less revenue going to government coffers. And at the same time, the minister says, uh, ways and means will then be curtailed. The reason why you have ways and means is that government does not have enough money to fund the expenditure. So government turns to the CBN and says, just credit my account with no value because government owns the CBN, uh, they just credit CBN, I mean, the CBN just credits government's account and government begins to spend. So uh, they, you cannot see that the minister's statement is contradictory. On the one hand, you are removing taxes, meaning less money is coming to government. And then on the other hand, you are going to do less or waste and means. We then need to ask the minister, where are you going to get the money to replace the tax revenue that should have accrued to government coffers, which you now say will not be there? Mm. Uh, you see, the, the Nigerian uh, government has a problem. Number one, they have a budget problem as we speak today uh, because they, they, they planned that there will be 
um, selling about 1.7 million barrels of crude oil per day. We are into the second month of the budget cycle, and crude oil production is still 1.3, 1.4 million barrels. Uh, so that means a, a lot less um, uh, revenue is coming in. Even though the budget benchmark price for oil is $77, as I speak today, uh, because I just looked into the market uh, as, as I was waiting here, oil is about $81. So on the price side, uh, government is making uh, a little bit more money, but you can see that the quantum of supply, check the difference between 1.7 and 1.3. We're having about three to 400,000 barrels that we are not selling, which we say we are going to sell. Mm -hmm. So this government is not making enough money to fund the budget, mm -hmm. at least for the first two months of this year. The implication is that it's either the government will not execute the budget as planned, or the government will have to go and borrow to fund this government, to, to fund this budget. So uh, for me, I think the Minister of Finance needs to go back to his office, sit down, and take a holistic look at Nigeria's economy and begin to look at both the macro and micro factors that is going to deal with. I, I think uh, this government is acting in a panicky measure, in a panicky way. I mean, taking panicky measures, you know, uh, running after warehouses, running after people's uh, foreign uh, exchange uh, balances in their accounts, you know, uh, saying we will convert your dollar inflows into Naira. For me, these are like fire brigade approach. To the economy. Uh, Nigeria economy is a virgin economy and this government by now should be looking at the big ticket items. You know, the, the president in his speeches in the past have mentioned we're going to clear this uh, swatch of land and we're going to do this. We, can know, we have not seen any tractor land on any piece of land in Nigeria yet. You know, uh, the refineries are there uh, government was talking about the 60,000 barrel one, which is the smallest of them. Uh, by now, it's almost a year they are in office. They could ship off those refineries, either on a lease or on a, an, an outright sale. And, and now refineries will be almost on their way producing the petrol. And they will not be talking about subsidy, will not be talking about uh, petroleum uh, uh, product scarcity and things like that. We'll not be talking about importation because you're looking for foreign exchange to go and bring these things in. All right. You know, government hasn't said anything about power supply. No. You know, I listened to the interview by the Minister of Power. I was I actually felt underwhelmed with his thoughts. And I said I'm going to do an article about it because this is a minister who doesn't seem to realize that we are supplying 3,000 megawatts of electricity to 200 million people. Mm. And I want to draw the minister's mind. Let him look elsewhere. If he looks elsewhere to UAE, they are supplying 30,000 megawatts to 10 million people. If he looks elsewhere to Brazil, that have an equivalent population like ours, 200 million people, they are supplying 180,000 megawatts per day. I mean, if you want to look towards India, they have uh, seven times our population, 400,000 megawatts per day. If Nigeria were to supply in India power based on our rating, we'll be giving them 21,000 megawatts because there are seven times our population. So just multiply seven by 3,000. Mm. The power supply is so abysmally low. There's oh. no way it can right. jumpstart this economy. It cannot start it. Okay. So these are the tickets, these are the kind of things I expect this government to be looking at. And not uh, ways and means and all those kind of things. Interestingly, we are um, still with the same minister who was also a minister under the formal administration. But then, that for me is um, not where I am going. Um, so in this discourse, there was a statement made by Senator Alain Dume who blamed the Senate for approving the request without details from the former president, Buhari, now, in your opinion, I'm still going to stay with you, Mr. Meek. Um, what measures do you think that the Senate should start taking to curb such oversight in the near future? Because I want to just peg it to be an oversight right now. 
so if I want to tell you my honest view about this situation is that I have no faith in the National Assembly of Nigeria. Wow. Senate and the House of Representatives. Okay. So the reason why I don't have any faith in this is that, um, you know, um, where we want to copy our democracy, <clears throat> the United States, they understand that the executive arm of government is so powerful, it's giving humongous powers. And in order to rein in, to contain uh, the powers of the executive arm of government, they fashioned the legislature and the judiciary to be the check on the executive arm of government. And as we know in Nigeria, the very first thing an executive, be he a president or a governor, does in his very first few days in office is to ensure that uh, he is the decides on the leadership of the legislative arm of government. And of course, the Constitution also makes the executive to be the one to appoint the judges into the judiciary. Mm -hmm. So all these things are the kind of structural imbalances we have in our Constitution. So with a legislature that is more or less pocketed by the executive, with the leaders of the National Assembly, uh, the Senate President and the Speaker of the House of Rep, acting as if they are senior special assistants to the president. You know, I don't have faith in such a, a, a legislative uh, arm of government that they are going to produce the good. What's happening here is simply to keep Nigerians busy. You know, they keep us busy. Like now, they talk about, we're going to probe the ways and means. It has got us talking. We're going to talk about it. It's going to occupy us. Because I have it on record, and I have the evidence to tell you that one of the biggest problems that Nigeria has today is the National Assembly. You know this budget we talk about, like that budget, the, the, the Nigeria's current budget of 28 trillion naira. I have it on good authority, as I have come to realize, that the National Assembly is controlling almost like half of that budget. You see an MDA, a Ministry Department of Agency, the budget line items they have, the National Assembly have their line items in those budgets. So the National Assembly, when it's time to uh, implement the budget, if there's a line item, construct this road from so-so to so-so, and it belongs to the National Assembly, it's the National Assembly that will bring the contractor to that MDA. And the contractor is the one who executes the project. Whether he executes the project or executes the project, National Assembly are controlling that line item. The MDA is not going to touch it. Anytime you hear the National Assembly querying an MDA, going on the so-called oversight function, and then making noise, <clears throat> is because an MDA is no longer abiding to the agreement or letting the National Assembly implement the budget. That is the National Assembly we have today. Please, you can send anybody into that place to go and find out. I am telling you this thing on good authority. And the people who are in government, they know this. The National Assembly is controlling a chunk of Nigeria's budget. But that's not their job. They are not an executive arm of government. So we, we have a situation in Nigeria where there is so much that is going wrong. And when this National Assembly come making this noise, I can, look, I put my pension on the table. Nothing is going to come out of this pool. Nothing. This is just noise making. Keep us busy. Talk about this. I want this government to focus on delivering results for Nigerians. So far, we are not seeing the results. I can see the poverty in the land. How can a nation so blessed, so blessed, we have all the resources, both underneath the earth, on the surface of the earth, even our population. It's a big resource that we can be committing to, you know, uh, become a prosperous nation. A prosperous nation where people will be envious of us. But that's not happening. So for me, look, uh, already as you can see, the, the, the spontaneous protests that are coming up in the country and all of that, people have been pushed to the wall. And I don't think we need this distraction from the National Assembly because nothing is going to come that's out. A big, uh, that's a big one. That's a wager there, uh, putting his pension on the line. <laughs> that's quite bold if you ask me. But uh, oh, well, do you do you uh, do you share the same view that uh, this is a distraction, like uh, Nick had called it? 
I, I, you know, mm -hmm. I have said it many times here that uh, the National Assembly, according to the Constitution, constitutionally, mm, the National Assembly is the most powerful arm of the government. You know why? Because the president cannot remove any member of the National Assembly, but the National Assembly can remove the president. Mm. So the National Assembly is automatically the most powerful. That's why when the government, they, 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 when they, 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 they have the, 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 that's according to the books. Yes, according, according to the books. But on, 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 on play, on the field, it's not different. Mm. The executive, you get it, use his own means, his own constitutional power to suppress the National Assembly. How? I pay your salary. I'm the one to pay everybody. I'm the one to execute all these things. I'm going to do that. So the, the, the National Assembly now become a, 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 some kind of a stooge to the executive so that they can get what they want to get from this. So that's why you see, when they, you, you elect the Senate, the, the Senate president or the speaker, the next thing they do is to rush down to the president, uh, to the president and then uh, thank the president. Why are you are thanking you now, the are president? You saying, are, you, are you now trying to buttress uh, the, the, the ideology that the democracy we, we, we practice is not good enough? It's not, it's, it's not that it's not good enough, it's wrong. We are, see, our democracy has no definition in the, in the dictionary. It has no definition. You get it? Our presidency has no definition in the dictionary. Mm. We are not practicing democracy. How can you practice democracy and you have your constitution starting with a, with a decree? How can you practice democracy and then uh, you have uh, money flying around to influence people's uh, 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 election, you know, to influence when it comes to election? How can you say you are practicing uh, democracy and then you, you, your uh, um, uh, primaries? You see them flying dollars here and there. You hear one, and nobody's probing them. How can you say you practice democracy and the judiciary salary and the appointment is controlled by one arm of the government? See what they are doing to Trump. In the America that will copy the democracy. See what they are doing to Trump. Okay. See what the judiciary is doing to Trump in America. You see what the House is doing to, 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 to the president okay. in America. Uh, uh, Even in India. Dr. Lawali, I'd like to come to you on this. Um, Nick made a very, very, like Moses said, a bold statement, putting his pension on the line. Uh, do you also share that thought, that what we are seeing presently from the Senate is more like a distraction? It's not even coming out come from this probe. I tell you earlier, before even Nick said it. <coughs> Nothing is going to come out. It's just like um, a distraction, like I said. And why, why are they probing this thing? This um, reason is they're saying the major reason why they want to probe because it is the one responsible for lack of food and, uh, and uh, inflation in the country. The one they are shifting blame. Focus on what that's why that is one of the major reason they want to probe. But don't you, you think know, Nigerians? Sorry, 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 okay. sorry. <laughs> You know, actually, it was about getting there because uh, they were of the opinion that this mismanagement or the reckless spending actually plays uh, a current uh, role in the current uh, food crisis and insecurity also facing the country. You know, they actually made mention of that to be the reason they have to do the probing to make sure that they cop that. The thing about this is that when there is the way they did the ways and um, funding actually should cause such inflation in the country, but. My whole question is this: If not for the fact that it may feel the past Senate, uh, this past uh, government, government is under fire about mismanagement of funds and everything, they will not talk about these things. It's going to be just they will just sweep it because now it may feel is involved in this. They just have to just talk as if okay, we we sign something. Let us talk because assuming it may feel is in their good book. Like you said, they won't say anything. Good book, you said. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me, let, me, let me come back to Nick now. Uh, Nick, um, I, I totally appreciate your, your, your sentiments on this, but um, don't you think Nigerians need to know where our taxes, our levies, our monies go to? Because the ways and means is, you know, like, like we all know, is money, Nigerians, money that belongs to Nigerians, being um, borrowed by the government of the day and uh, what don't you think Nigerians need to know really okay so a couple of things I'm going to say 
Uh, first of all, the waste and means is not revenue that government has earned at all. Government doesn't end uh, waste and means. It's not tax money. It's not money from crude oil. It's no money. What waste and means simply means is that uh, imagine you are you are the owner of a bank, a commercial bank. You are the owner, and uh, you wake up in the morning. You need one billion naira, and you don't have one billion in your account. Then you just put a call through to the managing director and say, you know what, Mr. Managing Director, can you just credit one billion to my account? I want to spend it. And Mr. Managing Director just uh, put one billion in your account. You will see a lot. Your account has been credited by one billion. And then you now start spending. That is what waste and means is. is for the federal government to ask the CBN, just put one trillion in federal government's account. And they, the, the CBN will just put one trillion in the account and the federal government will, will start spending it. And because that money didn't come from any productive activity, that's why it's inflationary. Because it becomes more money chasing the same uh, quantity of goods and services in the market. Mm. You know, now I want to say something that will shock Nigerians. I believe that this current government, as we're speaking today, is also doing ways and means. Why do I believe so? Like I said earlier, this government in the budget said they'll be selling 1.7 million barrels of crude oil per day. So far, they are selling 1.3, 1.4. And at the same time, the allocation to the federal, state, and local government has increased and has actually breached the 1 trillion Naira mark. So now they are they are actually sharing more than one trillion every uh, uh, circle, every federal uh, account allocation committee circle, every month. We ask ourselves the question, where is that money coming from? If you are not making enough money, as you said you are making in the budget, and yet your allocation has increased, remember, this government said the allocation has increased because we are now saving on fuel subsidy. Okay, Look, yeah. Moses, I already posted on my Twitter last year. Mm -hmm. I said, there is something that is happening on this subsidy that this government is not telling us. You know why? I took a picture, I physically, me, took a picture of on a pump in London. I took a picture like this. The price of diesel was, I think, one pound mm -hmm. 57. And the price of petrol was one pound uh, 48. And I, and I told Nigerians that the price of diesel and petrol in the international market where we go to buy is very small. In this case, it was just nine pence. You understand? How is it possible that in Nigeria, petrol is 600 and something and diesel is 1,200? That means a petrol is just about 50 percent mm. the price of diesel in Nigeria. Whereas abroad, it's like 90%. So, and I say two things are happening here. You see that the government is quietly subsidizing the price of petrol. That is why it has suppressed it to 600 and something. Or those who are selling diesel have hiked their prices beyond where it should be. Has it not emerged now that the government is actually subsidizing petrol? That is the truth, Moses. If this government was not subsidizing petrol, if diesel is 1,200, petrol will be about 1,000, 1,100. That is the way it is priced in the international market where we are going to buy. You know, so if this government is not making money from subsidy, rather they are paying subsidy, and they are not making enough revenue, as they say they will make, where are they seeing 1 trillion naira to, 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 to share to the three arms of government every month? Moses. This must be from ways and means. Oh, okay, <laughs> from ways and means. Now right. back to the people we have in the studio. You know, we have. I have to ask you this, Minister Lawa. You know, as also give us your your concluding thought. We have actually pointed out so many things that we don't really understand happening uh, with the National Assembly. You know, now we're talking about uh, 30 trillion naira ways and means mm. money, and uh, talking about proving them. Some time ago, Boss Mustafa told us that the president's uh, signature was also forged, and huge amounts of money actually 
were being taken out yes. due to that particular act. Now, actually, you also said that the the legislature happened, should have been the, the strongest arm mm. of government, but now they are dancing to the tune of the executive. Now, what are we going to do to make sure that we have all the, first, the misappropriation, second, to bring in checks and balance to make the you know government move forward? People may not, uh, some people may uh, raise uh, an eyebrow if I say this, but sorry, we need political revolution in this country. Without political re revolution, we are not going anywhere. Because the moment some people are controlling the government, the government will always dance to their tune. Mm -hmm. I, he, you know, like, this, uh, I think this week I was asking you, I said the government should ask, because they are pegging, uh, pegging the price of cement at 7,000 naira. The question we ask is, why is the price of cement increasing when most of what they use in making the cement is coming from Nigeria? Now, the same government went to Abuja and locked a store that the price on that store is different from what they are selling to people, mm -hmm. that they are inflating price. But the same cement, you are pegging the price. So you can see unfairness in this area. Why are you not being fair to I mean, have a level playing right. ground? Why? Because some people, you get it, are pressing the button. All right, then. Well, we, we are pressed for, for mm. time now. So let's just uh, get uh, Dr. Olawale's concluding thoughts on this one. Co concluding thoughts, everything we need to do now is that, uh, fine, political, political uh, revolution. revolution, very, very important, and also the every the every arm of government needs to be checked it needs to be um independent the legislature the judiciary they have to be an independent body like they, right they are then. meant to be okay. apart from that nothing will happen all right then uh, we'll have to let you go and also uh, nick agule let's get uh, your concluding thoughts in about 30 seconds uh, so my, my concluding thoughts mm -hmm. is that uh, the our constitution creates four arms of government the executive the legislature, the judiciary, and the citizen arm of government. The citizen arm of government is the one that is not working in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And we have allowed the other three arms of government to do whatever they want. If we want Nigeria to develop, the citizen arm of government with humongous powers mm -hmm. granted to us by the same constitution must become active to checkmate the other three arms of government to deliver good governance. That is what happens even in the countries our young people are jumping to. <laughs> All right, then. The big thanks to you, uh, Dr. Olawali Olatubi. Thanks for joining us on the yeah. program. And also, uh, Dr. Olawali is a proud father. <laughs> <laughs> I had to say that one again. Thank you very and, much. Uh, nice. Well, thank you. Thank you once again. And big thanks to Nick Agule, who I just discovered is a COVID survivor, actually. Mm. Uh, well, uh, and also a charity worker, chartered accountant, we already know. And interestingly, a Catholic minister. Mm. Oh, that's good. Yes, he's a, he's a Catholic minister. Well, thank you very much for your, your thoughts and views, Nick Agule. Thank you very much. I have a nice day to have you. All right, then. All right, then. We'll take a break now when we come back.